Good morning. I was asked a very specific question, and that very specific question was, is there in-person testimony in a bar complaint hearing? And the answer to that question directly is maybe. <laughs> so this comes up because Earl did a video, I think on Friday or some Saturday maybe, where he was discussing the state of his bar complaint against the Hemmings, Krista Hemming and Felipe Hemming. His bar complaint, to the best of my knowledge, is based on the allegation that he was being represented by Krista Hemming, or he reasonably believed he was being represented by Krista Hemming. He gave Krista Hemming materials, documents, and information for the purposes of litigation so that she could represent him. She then allowed a staff member, Felipe Hemming, who she has control over as the attorney, she has control over her staff. She allowed her staff member to disseminate that information and that dissemination of information hurt his case, hurt his cause of action, hurt his reputation, etc. It was, he is essentially alleging a breach of the duty of confidentiality. Now, the way the system typically works, from the best of my understanding, again, having never been contacted by the state bar, I don't really have an in-depth insight into how this works. But my best understanding is that upon receiving a complaint, an attorney who works for the California State Bar will review the complaint and see if the complaint alleges violations of the California Rules of Professional Responsibility or any other statutory rule like in the Business and Professions Codes. There are lots of rules for attorneys. They're looking to see if there is a violation of a rule. Now I think, I think why I have never received anything like that is because I, unlike uh, Krista, have never represented one of the idiots complaining about me. And my, my behavior, while some people might not like the mean words I say online, is not a violation of the California Rules of Professional Responsibility. But that's neither here nor there. So if the attorney determines that there is no violation, there is no allegation of a violation, I should say, that the complaint doesn't allege anything that the California State Bar can act on, they will send a letter back to the complainant stating that there is no nothing for the California State Bar to take action on. If the attorney determines that the complaint does allege a breach of one of the duties of the attorney towards the client, then the attorney will send it to an investigative unit where attorneys and investigators will work together to uncover the facts. And it doesn't matter what facts a person has or hasn't turned over to the state bar with the complaint, everything Earl said in that regards was retarded as normal. And if you're wondering who Earl is, it's Earl David Warden, News Now Houston, the convicted rapist who is currently on, on trial. He's not actually in trial. No, he's on trial. The trial process is ongoing. It's in the pre-trial stages of the, of the trial, but it's, it's, he's on trial. Uh, he's on trial right now for uh, the ongoing sexual molestation of his daughter when she was 13 to 16. So they don't accept screenshots of payments and things like that typically. What they're going to do is they're going to conduct discovery. They're going to get uh, documents from Krista showing what she received, when she received it, why she received it, was she paid, 
is there a signed contract? And an unsigned contract is not much use. I mean, he could allege that he thought because he had sent back the contract that he was being represented by Krista. Um, but whether or not the attorney signed the contract is going to be some indicator of whether or not she had decided to represent him and whether or not he could have a reasonable belief that she was representing him. Anyway, so they're going to conduct regular old discovery. They're going to notify the attorney who is the accused and they're going to uh, demand discovery. Uh, you know, documents, requests for production of documents, requests for admissions, interrogatories. To the best of my knowledge, they are treating it as though it is a normal civil suit. Because indeed, it's headed towards court if they can't reach a settlement. Uh, they'll also most likely subpoena bank records showing that Earl has made payments. Um, they're not going to just take his screenshots again, and they're not going to take things directly from him except for to do the actual discovery, to do the actual subpoenaing documents and things like that. Or at least that's my understanding of it. I mean, they may accept something from him, but I am assuming that they're going to actually go and, and subpoena the actual documents from the actual records keeper who will sign a affidavit stating that they've turned over all the documents and it's complete and accurate because it's a lot better to get those documents from a bank than from a convicted rapist with a penchant for lying. So after they conduct their investigation, they're going to make a determination on whether or not the evidence supports an allegation that the accused breached a duty that they failed to uh, uphold the client's interests or they failed to maintain the client's confidentiality, et cetera, et cetera. If they decide that there was no evidence or there's insufficient evidence, then they're going to let everybody know. They may still, from my understanding, they may still make recommendations to the accused so that the accused may modify their approach to avoid that particular situation again. But there won't be any uh, disciplinary proceedings at that point. If they decide that there is evidence, sufficient evidence to go forward, then they'll notify everybody. And the attorney, the accused attorney has two choices at that point. They can either go to trial or they can try to settle the matter. And by settle the matter, they're settling it with the California State Bar, not with the complainant. So if they decide to settle it, then they'll go to mediation or arbitration or something similar to that. I'm not entirely sure the way that works, but it's going to be one of the two. And they'll try to work out a, a mutually agreeable deal. Um, the attorney will agree that they did X, Y, and Z wrong, and in exchange, the state bar will recommend lesser punishments of A, B, and C. If, if they do work out a deal at settlement, then that settlement will go to the California State Bar Court, which is an actual court. It is an actual California court. It's the Superior Court of California. And that court will determine whether or not the settlement is fair and equitable to the state of California, the bar, and the accused. Now, if they don't settle, it will go to a full evidentiary hearing trial. It's going to be a trial. Uh, the accused will have hired an attorney, hopefully, because even an attorney who represents himself is generally a fool. They will have conducted all of their discovery appropriately. They will have their exhibits, they'll do their, their trial briefs, they will call witnesses, they will make evidentiary objections, etc., etc., the whole nine yards. And you can look up the California State Bar docket, and last time I checked, Krista Hemming was not on it. So however far it's gotten, it hasn't gotten to the point where the California State Bar has actually filed a lawsuit against Krista Hemming. So at that, at that particular trial, then 
um, yes, you can indeed call witnesses. Now, whichever way it goes, either the state bar can appeal that decision, whatever that decision is, or the attorney, the accused, can appeal that decision, whichever way it is. So they, they, do, get a, they do get a right of appeal. Now, there is a caveat. I know if you're disbarred, it may be something else, uh, but I know if you're disbarred, or maybe if there's a suspension longer than a year, I don't remember the second, the second uh, trigger, but if you are disbarred, I know you get automatically sent up to the California Supreme Court for them to review it, to make sure that, that disbarment is appropriate. So that's, that's the way that process is going to work. Um, once again, Earl's going to have to, well, the state bar, in order to get Krista, is they're going to have to prove that, that Earl was or reasonably believed he was a client and that he turned over documents or information that he was intending to get legal advice on or to use for litigation. And that she allowed that information to be disseminated by her staff. That's that's essentially what the state bar is going to have to prove. Now, the the question becomes: Was Krista representing Earl? I don't know. I mean, my default position is that Earl's a liar, and I don't I don't like the Hemmings, personally or particularly, but you know. I can't say I can't say they're liars, so I just don't know. We'll we'll have to see, I guess. That's where I'm at. I can't tell you. So anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great day.